Hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and I want to thank you for taking time to listen to this teaching on the month of Tishri. Tishri is the seventh month on the biblical calendar, and it's the beginning of the new year on the civic one. One focuses on creation, where man was created on the sixth day, so they start the, the new year on the sixth day of creation. And why do they start it on the sixth day instead of the first? Well, they say, the rabbis say, there's nothing that makes sense without man because God made everything for us. What a good God we serve. And the biblical calendar or the spiritual calendar focuses on Nisan, which is the time or in the Torah or the Bible that says that that is the beginning of months. And it is the month of redemption. It's the Passover. So that is why there's two calendars. They're both very important. And this is a very important month. This is a month where God Almighty is very excited. Some rabbis say this is the dearest of the months to the Lord because it's the month of the false feasts. And this is a month where we, we are constantly in the presence of God. We're constantly examining our hearts before the Lord. We're constantly taking time with Him so that we can hear His heart and know His ways. Where people now, this is a month of what? Fasting and, and teshuva or repentance. I'm finally getting this down. Teshuva. It's a time to, it's a time where we, we um, like in Joel, it says we rent our hearts and not our garments. It's a time to examine yourself, to prepare yourself as you enter into this new year. Because God wants to release His favor over our lives and He's he releases it over a heart that's prepared before him, a heart that's ready to receive his goodness and his grace. So this is a month of Tishri, and it, it means the beginning. It's the beginning of the months. It's the beginning. And this month is full of all kinds of special anointings from the Lord. It's the month of Ephraim and the tribe of Eph Ephraim, which is the tribe of Joseph. Joseph has two tribes in, in this or. Manasseh and Ephraim, and Ephraim means to be doubly fruitful. And what happened is when God exalted Joseph after going through all the trials and tribulations that he went through, and in prison, and and being sold as a slave, and being rejected by his brothers, you know what? All of when God exalted him and gave him a wife, they had two children, and one was causing to forget Manasseh. And one was Ephraim, you made me fruitful in the land of my afflictions. God can do that, y'all. God is the God that can make you prosper in the midst of hard places. Can I tell you that again? When groceries are going sky high and gas is off the charts and, you know, you don't know which way to turn that you, you're trying to, to, to take your finances and cover the, your month and you find out that it's getting everything's getting more and more expensive well i'll tell you what god is able to make you prosper in the land of your affliction uh, that means whatever you're going through no matter how hard or difficult it is god says i'm able to make you prosper joseph found favor constantly you see but joseph found favor joseph found favor and even the the people they didn't know god but they recognized this that God's hand was upon Joseph, that they were blessed because of him. And God wants to make you a blessing so that others can be blessed. That's the covenant that he made with Abraham, that he would make us a blessing. Or Abraham would say that he would make us a blessing to all, all the people of the earth. That's what God wants to put on you. And this is the time to be doubly, doubly blessed. That's Ephraim. Ephraim is a reminder that no matter how hard or how difficult the things are that you go through, that God Almighty will bless you if you'll keep your heart turned to Him. Let me say that again. Turn your heart to God and He will what? He will bless you in the midst of your hard places. God will bless you. Ephraim, doubly blessed. The stone for this month is onyx and it's a black shiny stone. And this stone was first mentioned in Genesis and it talked about the rivers that flowed from the Garden of Eden and one with Pishon and and from that they, they found gold in Havilah and, and also they found onyx and 
onyx was used in the breastplate of the high priest. They took two onyx stones and they wrote the names of the tribes on each onyx stone, six on each of the onyx stone, and they put it on the shoulders of the breastplate. And this is a month of the strong, and shoulders are a symbol of strength. And so these were put on the shoulders to remember and to bring before God the names of the tribes. And let me say this again, that every, I love how everything ties together as we study the month of Tishri, all the different symbols and all the different parts of Tishri, they all come together. And so the onyx was put on the high priest's breastplate. It was put on them because he would go before God and those names would be seen before God constantly. And it was a reminder to them, to the high priest, that who they were standing before God on behalf as they made their offerings, what they were bringing the, the children of Israel before God Almighty and to, so that they, that they would be pleasing before the Lord so that their sins would be washed away. God's a mighty God. He's an amazing, amazing God. He ties everything together. And sometimes I get so amazed when I study these things that I, I just want to, I want to shout and then I want to cry. And I just go, I want to, I just go, wow, <laughs> wow, how amazing. So Exodus 28, 9 through 12 tells you about the onyx stones and how Aaron would wear them on his shoulder to bear the names of, of Israel before the Lord as a memorial. And I, I love the meaning of, I have this one um, teaching by Carol Nimis, and it's amazing. I, I love this teaching. She talks about black, and this is just one of the things about black. It says, black, the color of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh's tribal stone, and the flag, onyx, the double blessing. Some say the onyx is flesh-colored or tan. Either way, a burning to black ashes is necessary. Black is the result of fire. God is a consuming fire. God's kingdom requires that the fleshly nature of man must be burnt away. And this, I mean, this is what this month is all about, y'all. To be crucified and sacrificed and circumcised. In other words, a dying, a burning creation of ashes in order for us to come close. Jesus, Jesus showed us how this is done when he died on the cross in obedience to the Father. Whoa. What? The onyx, a symbol of sacrifice, a symbol of God's love for us that he kept our names before him as a high priest brought in the sacrifices before him. God's a mighty God. What a lover he is. Oh, this God, he loves us. The letter for this month is Lament. And Lament is the tallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And I it, it's the, it's like this, it goes above the line. All the other um, alpha, Hebrew alphabet is below the line. But Lament, which is smack dab in the middle, it's the 12th letter. It's in the middle and it goes above. It breaks through the line. And so a lot of people say this, this letter is the breakthrough letter. It breaks through. It pierces through the heavens. And it's the heavenly letter. They, some say it's like a tower floating in the heavenlies, a tower of teaching where God is revealing secrets and mysteries, and he's teaching us. This is the layman. And it, it talks about, about how this letter, it looks like um, a shepherd's staff, but it also looks like an ox goad. So a shepherd's staff that would lead the, the sheep the right direction it's this teaching mantle that is upon this letter, and yet it teaches, it leads them in the right direction, and that has to go with this whole month where God is wanting to speak to us, to lead us in the right direction so that we can come into this new year blessed and prosperous with his instructions that will not fail. His word doesn't return void. It accomplishes what it's sent through to. So the, it's the teaching that the teaching or the staff, which teaches the, the, the animals which way to go, leads them and guides them, comforts them and strengthens them. I love Psalms 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they what? They comfort me. 
your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They bring comfort to me. And then, then they say it looks like an ox go goad. So they would take the, the um, ox that was being kind of rebellious, didn't want to go the right direction, and what they do would just kind of poke it. And you know, prod it. They prod it, poke it. And what would that do? Well, where they were going one way, well, they'd go the right way, right? When they were going the opposite way they were supposed to, they would go the, the right way. You ever read God's Word and you just you feel the prick of the Holy Spirit on your heart? Oh, yeah, I've, I'm over and over and over where you, like, you get convicted. It, it convicts your heart, which is a, such a wonderful thing that God would convict us so that we would go the right way. This is what this month is all about. And this is what the Lamed is about. It pierces above, and they say it's the king of the letters. It's the king, and it goes the highest because there's no king higher than Jesus Christ. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Oh, yeah, yes. So that, was the, that is the letter that we have this month, and it's right in the middle, and it's the number um, 12 on the alphabet, which is 12 is the number of government, and, and then it's the number 30, which is the number of maturity. It's the mature. Remember, Jesus began his ministry at 30. Remember Joseph, he was like 30. And even, even David, when he was first became king, he was at 30, at 30 when he was king of Hebron. Lamed is the letter that heart starts with. And this is to let you know that God wants more from us than us taking our minds and learning things like a computer. And He wants more from us than that. The Bible says knowledge puffs up. So he doesn't want you puffed up. He wants heart and everything that you learn. Solomon, when he asked God to have wisdom, he wasn't asking for wisdom per se, like, ah, oh, just help me to. He was saying, God, give me a hearing heart. Give me a heart, an understanding heart, really a hearing heart. Tishri is the beginning of the new year. Tishri means beginning, and the very first day of Tishri is Rosh Hashanah. Rasha is beginning. Shana is what? It's year, the beginning of the year. And we also know it as the Feast of the Trumpets, where the shofars are being blown constantly, a hundred times a day during Rosh Hashanah, and the, this two-day feast. And it also is the beginning of awe. So you've got the beginning of awe that starts at Rosh Hashanah and ends at Yom Kippur. And this, this, this feast is a time of great rejoicing. It's a time of celebration, but it's a time when the books are open. The books are open, and it's a time where God is deciding what our year is going to be like by the way that we respond to Him. Let me say that again. You know, it really matters how you live. It really does matter. God wants to bless us. He wants to enlarge us. The Bible says in Isaiah, the Lord longs to be gracious to us. He waits on high to have compassion on us. For the Lord is a God of justice, and how blessed are those who long for Him. But He is a God of justice. He looks for ways to be gracious to us. And so this is a time where the books are open, and God is inviting us to line our lives up so that He can write good things in the year ahead, so that the blessing of God will be upon this year ahead. Remember, this is a time of Ephraim where God says, you know what, this is what I really want to do for you. I really want to bless you. I really want to doubly bless you. I really want this year to be prosperous and blessed. So this is the beginning of the books being open. And yes, yes, this is a time of examining your heart in the midst of all the festivals and the eating apples and honey, honey that symbolizes the sweetness of the year and casting things in the water to, to, to remind us that God is the God that get, takes care of our sins. The Bible says in Micah 7, 18 through 20, it was a God like thee who passes over our iniquity and he passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession. He does not retain his anger forever because what? He delights in unfailing love. He longs to be gracious to us, y'all. Because he delights in un unchanging love, he will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities under his feet. Yes, he will cast all of our sins. This is why they throw things in the water. Yes, he will cast all our, our sins into the depths of the sea because he is a good God, y'all. 
He delights in unchanging yeah. love. And this is the time of the Feast of the Trumpets. And why do they blow the shofar so many times? Well, they say it just drives the devil crazy. He gets so confused when he sees, he hears the sound of the shofar. It's like the voice of God, y'all. And I love the shofar. See, because of the shofar, we remember where the shofar came from. It's the ram. And, you know, during this time, we remember the scapegoat and we remember Isaac's sacrifice. Remember, Abraham was told by the Lord to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And as they're going up the mountain to, to offer, he's, he's getting ready to offer up his own son. Then the, Isaac says to his father, he says, Dad, where's the, where is the, the lamb for the offering, for the burnt offering? And Abraham says, God will provide the lamb. God will what? God will provide the lamb. God Almighty wants to provide the lamb. And so we, after Abraham is ready to, to slay his son and the angel stops him and declares blessing over his life because he wouldn't even withhold his own son from him, then all of a sudden they look and there's a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. Right, y'all? And so the horn, you know, there's never mention of a trumpet until after the this happened with Abraham and Isaac. There's not a mention of a trumpet in the Bible. But after that, we hear about the ram's horn because God Almighty wanted this to be a symbol of redemption and salvation of what he did when he sent his son. Behold the Lamb of God. Everybody knows that, and that, that Isaac, that the ram caught in a thicket was a substitution for, for Isaac, which is Isaac is us, and that what? The ram is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good works. And everyone knows this scripture, which is John three sixteen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John said in John the first chapter behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the whole world everyone recognized jesus christ as the passover lamb or the lamb that was caught in the thicket and isaiah 53 he was wounded for our transgression bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace fell upon him and by the stripes of jesus christ y'all by his stripes we were healed we were healed i love this one part but the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he'd render himself as a guilt offering, we were guilty. Come on. If he'd render himself as a guilt offering, he would see his offspring. He would prolong their days. The good pleasure of the Lord would prosper in his hands. And as a result of the anguish of his soul, he would see it and be satisfied. For, but for by the knowledge of this righteous one, my servant, he will justify the many. For he will interceded for the transgressions and he bore the guilt of many. So God Almighty, what? It's all about Jesus. And how can we go through, through this, this season where we're examining our hearts constantly and, and, uh, and telling the Lord, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. And, and the greatest part of being a Christian is knowing the grace and the goodness of God. No, it's not a license to sin. It's not a license to live any way you want. The Bible talks about grace that grace is more than God's unmerited favor. But grace gives us the ability to do what we could never do in our own strength, to please God Almighty. It's, it says, For the grace of God appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly and righteously in, righteously in this present world. What? God wants us to take time to examine our hearts. James says, says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. And you know what? Then God says, I'll exalt you. That's just the way he is. He's the God that pardons our iniquities. So as at the end, during the 10 days of awe, at the end of Rosh Hashanah, which is two days, at the 10 days of awe, there's this time period where from the beginning of Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, we're getting ready. We're, 
we're preparing our hearts. We're asking the Lord to cleanse us. Show us anything that's getting in the way, anything that, that, that's out of line, Lord God. You know, remember that the Bible talks about sin. To him to who knows the right thing to do, to him it's sin. So it's not just, just dirty, dark things that we know are wrong, like breaking the Ten Commandments, but, but also, you know what? It's just missing the mark. The Bible says that sin is to miss the mark, to miss the mark. So during this time, we are people that are rending our hearts and not our garments, right? Until we get up to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is when the books are closed. Well, during this time, the 10 days of all, the books are open for us, us to change our hearts. And, and why I say change our hearts, we know that only God can change our hearts. But we bring our hearts before the Lord and He cleanses our hearts. He gives us His righteousness. And we know, know as Christians, we know that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says that He offered Himself as a sacrifice for us. The, the Bible says in Hebrews, Hebrews, let's see if I can remember it. He, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, every priest stands daily, ministering and offering the same sacrifices time after time, which can never take away sins. But he, having offered himself for sin once for all time, sat down at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says he lives to make intercession for us. So that's, that's in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. So now we're in the time of Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. It's the day of atonement, or they call it the day of covering where God Almighty is close. And He's during this time period, again, we're to be people where we're renting our hearts and not our garments because we know what? The Lord's compassionate. He's gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. Joel says, who knows if He'll leave us a blessing? And we, you know what? Can I tell you? Again, He longs to be gracious to us. He's the God that's waiting on high to have compassion on us. So during this time period, again, it's the learning of our hearts as coming before the Lord. So right before Yom Kippur, there's a big meal, a big feast where everybody, you have to eat. If you don't eat, whoa, it's like, it's like, it's a bad, bad news. You have to celebrate and eat right before Yom Kippur because it's a, it's a 24 hour fast. Don't, you don't eat anything. You don't drink anything. You, you have to be careful what you wear. You have to be careful um, to being intimate with your husband or your wife or whatever. It's just like, you've got to be, the, it's just like God saying, just set yourself apart from me. I just want to be with you. This is serious stuff. I want to do a work in your life. I, I can give you what you can't. You know, that's why Jesus died, y'all, because we couldn't be righteous, couldn't be holy, couldn't do what was right before God. But if we'll come before him, rent our hearts, not our garments, and just receive the grace of God, again, that enables us to change, enables us to please God. So the last feast is Sukkot, and it's the Feast of Tabernacle, the Feast of Booth, and it's the time where the children of Israel, uh, or, or I should say the Jewish people, they celebrate. They celebrate. They celebrate, and, and in Leviticus 23, it just names all the feasts and what, how, what they were to do during this time period. But just think camping, because they camp out. They build this booth and or the Sukkot, and they cover it with all kinds of leafy plant life, a lot of palm trees, myrtle trees, all this. And, and they have to see the stars, and that's why in, on the poster I put stars on it so that you would remember that God wants you to see the stars. And honestly, I always think of Abraham when I think of stars, where he said his descendants would be as the stars of heaven. And, and of course, Jew, the Jewish people are his descendants. So God wants you to see the stars. He wants you to celebrate and talk to Him. It's just a time to draw close to God. And you have all these amazing meals inside the sukkah and, and, or the booths. And just in enjoying, enjoying God. And just remember that, that in the last month of Elu, was the, the king is in the field. He pitched his tent. Just remember that God Almighty wants to pitch His tent with you. And, he, and let me say this. He wants you to draw near to Him, to tabernacle with Him, to be with Him. Remember, John 1 says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, or tabernacled among us. He came to live among us. He's a good, good God. So let me say this about all these feasts. This tabernacle is you're feasting and you're having dinners and you spend as much time as you can inside 
of the sukkah or the the tent or the place of meeting the tabernacle because why because god wants to be with you he wants to be with you he wants you he loves you it's all about his love for you so another anointing on this month is is to touch the lord the story of the woman with the issue of blood who pressed through and she touched the hem of his garment. That's what this month is all about. It's about pressing through all the stuff that would get in the way. Come on, remember the sower and the seed. Uh, the Bible says this, the seed that fell among the thorns, and this is, these are the ones that hear and they go on their way and they're choked by worries, choked by riches, choked by the pleasures of life, and let's say the desire for other things, and what they bring no fruit to maturity. It's the time to get rid of all the stuff that gets in the way, and what? Come close to God. Press through. Touch the hem of his garment, or his tallit, his sitsits, those little, the little, little um, tassels on the end that symbolize the, the, the Torah, the laws of God, the, the commandments of the Lord. And when they touched it, you know what? When she touched it, they were made, she was made whole. And remember this, that in the scriptures, that also, there's other places where it says that they touched the hem of his garment and they were healed. So I don't know if they heard from her, but they knew this. They just t they touched that, that sit sit or the, his tallit, the, the fringe. And you know what? That hem. And they were made whole. It's time to touch the Lord, time to press through all the stuff, time, time to celebrate this great and mighty King. So just remember that this is a time where the books are open. Take time with your heart. Examine your heart. And remember on Yom Kippur, it's closed. You decide, it's like decided what your year is going to be like. So let this year be full of sweetness, full of sweetness. Be taught of the Lord as you're in, in your tabernacle. Let the Lord speak to you. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He loves you. He loves you. Now, Father, I just thank you for each and every one of these wonderful, wonderful people, Lord. You just, you love us, Lord. You love us. And God, you want to bless this year and fill it with double abundance, Lord. Fruitfulness, Lord, that overflows. And, and I love, again, I just declare this over you in the midst of every hard place, Ephraim. The tribe of Ephraim, which Joseph just cried out, and he said, said, you made me fruitful in my land of affliction, that no matter what you're going through, God is able to turn it all around and make you a blessing, make you fruitful. Lord, so I thank you for blessing, Lord God, upon blessing, upon blessing on your people this, this, this month of Tishri. And Lord, I thank you for a new year that's filled with your abundance in the midst of it all. Lord, I just thank you. I remind your people, Lord God, that there was light in Goshen, Lord God, that you made a distinction between your people and the people of this world. Now I bless you and I wanna go out with the shofar blast since this month is filled with shofars blasting constantly. Bless you. Have a blessed tissue. Bye-bye.